Hey everybody, I'm Jer. Welcome to my YouTube. I want to talk to you about a number. Let's see if you can guess it. Close your eyes and think with me here. I'm betting you can't guess it because it is 20,999,976,9, which is almost 977, but not quite. Now, what is this? this number <laughs> okay um let's discuss this number over here 20 million nearly we'll just say 21 million because usually people that's what people say is 21 million is the number of bitcoin that will ever ever be in existence 21 million and that's it no more no less, that's it. That's all of the Bitcoin that will ever be in existence. And as of this week, 90% of that has already been mined or created, whatever you want to say. Mined is the official term because it is mining on your computer, which is too complicated for most people to even understand. I don't really get it. It's a whole bunch of codes that break down a block that, yeah. Yeah, so, but what you need to know is that this number, 21 million, is all of the Bitcoin that will ever exist. Why is that important? Okay, so, since this number, the 21 million, is the most Bitcoin that will ever exist, as more and more people start to adopt and use Bitcoin, as more and more businesses start to adopt and accept and use Bitcoin, this doesn't grow. It doesn't become 400 million. It doesn't come, become 1 billion. It doesn't come multiple billions or trillions. It, is, it stays at this number. Now then, you don't have to own Bitcoin in multiples of one. You own Bitcoin in fractions of one or multiples if you end up owning more than one Bitcoin. Um, but it's all fractional. So you can purchase in fractions of a Bitcoin that your phone or you can figure out with whatever you have. So now then, here's the fun part, the exciting part about Bitcoin. More and more businesses are going to adopt Bitcoin. They already have begun adopting Bitcoin. They are using services like Lolly, like Bact, like Cash App, uh, which is also Block, which is, used to be Square, like PayPal. They are using these services, these payment processing services to start to accept and adopt Bitcoin. The confusing thing, something very confusing about it, is that along with Bitcoin, there's hundreds of other cryptocurrencies being created. Now then, not all businesses are going to adopt all cryptocurrencies. Most will adopt Bitcoin. Some will adopt Ether. These are the, main, the two main ones. And then there's a slew of other ones. The problem with the other ones is usually they are not production controlled. Meaning they can create billions upon billions upon billions or trillions or who knows how many, which dilutes the coins that are already out there. Dog coin, Dogecoin is one of those coins that continues just to create more and more and diluting the worth of the Doge coins that are already out there and available. Bitcoin doesn't do that. It's limited. There will never ever be any more than 21 million Bitcoin. So as people start to adopt, you start to think about supply and demand. If more and more businesses are accepting Bitcoin and more and more people are using Bitcoin, 
That means supply goes down because it's spread out to more businesses and more people while demand goes up. When supply is low, demand is high, it makes the thing that's in demand and that there's low supply of go up in value. It's the same way that stocks work. There's a limited number of stocks, although you can, they can, companies can create more stock, but let's say that there's one set number of shares of stock. If a lot of people want this, want to own a piece of that company, and there's, a, let's say there's 5 million people that want to own one, a piece of the 1 million shares, then that 1 million shares becomes more scarce, causing the price of the share of stock to go up. It's the same thing for inflation. If there's a product that is limited in supply, then the price of that product is going to go up or it's not going to exist or it's going to be very small. It's like collectibles. It's like a lot of things. Supply and demand. This is how supply and demand work. So right now, as of today, I believe Bitcoin's probably at like 47,000, 48,000. I don't know the exact number. I'm not pulling it up here, but the it's 47,000 per coin. We'll say 47,000. As demand goes up, as more businesses, as more people adopt as more countries, because this is not just U.S., this is worldwide. Bitcoin is worldwide. And a country is going to have a lot of trouble banning Bitcoin from being used. Um, it's going to still happen. I'm almost certain of it. Um, and more and more countries are starting to accept and adopt Bitcoin. Um, and so as this happens, Bitcoin will become more scarce. There's only going to be 21 million of them always 21 million of them so there there won't be less than that unless people lose their bitcoin wallet their keys uh, for bitcoin um, which has happened because people didn't expect bitcoin to be what it is now they were buying it at you know whenever bitcoin was seven dollars or something like that now bitcoin is worth you know forty seven thousand dollars if they owned a hundred of those at seven dollars, seven hundred dollars then is a heck of a lot of money now. But they lost it, like they may have lost their wallet or wherever they were storing this Bitcoin, um, their digital wallet or whatever it happens to be, uh, hardware digital wallet, um, and so that's gone because they're not able to find wherever that went. But we won't ever have more than that 21 million. As more countries adopt Bitcoin, start using Bitcoin and the businesses in those country, countries and the people in those countries start, used to start using Bitcoin, which makes uh, the economy more, more accessible. So it makes it to where access to the economy, the world economy is more available for everybody. And so more countries are going to start to accept and they may try to regulate it some, which is fine. Some regulation is fine. You don't want any country to have, try to have complete control over Bitcoin. But some regulation is fine. Some laws in countries is fine. And that will happen. And you may see some drop off as that happens on Bitcoin. But in the overall scheme of things, as countries accept Bitcoin, even if there's some regulation, it's bringing more adoption to Bitcoin, of Bitcoin, by people and then by businesses. Like I said, as that happens, you start having more countries across the world. Yes, in the U.S. too, but across the world because Bitcoin is spread out across the world. It's not limited just in the U.S. As businesses and people start to adopt it, you're going to start to see that the price of Bitcoin is going to go up because supply and demand. So you only have 21 million, 
total 21 million total Bitcoin in the whole world that is gradually being dispersed to people and to businesses. And businesses are starting to accept Bitcoin as payment. My thing is, it's volatile. It's, it's, there's a lot of volatility to it now. Yes, there absolutely is. But whenever you consider supply and demand long run, even if it's kind of choppy right now, it's going to be choppy kind of upward as more countries and across the world and people and businesses in those countries start to accept Bitcoin, it's going to start being choppy upward, not downward. Because you're going to have more and more people, more and more businesses using Bitcoin in circulation. 90% of this is already available. So we are only missing probably, what would that be? 20... 2.1 million. There's only 2.1 million around there left of Bitcoin to be mined. I would not doubt that if in if adoption keeps on going at the rate that it's going, with more and more businesses being able to accept Bitcoin and more people storing Bitcoin as safekeeping of money, because here's the thing. Countries' currencies have the value of a dollar, the value of a euro, or the value have gone down. So whereas if you look at inflation, what five years ago, one dollar would have bought you, it would take one dollar and 15 cents now to buy you that same thing on a general stance, on um, a level playing field here. Uh, because our inflation has been 15%, about 15% over the last five years is what we've seen an increase in inflation be. So you can take $1, what was $1 then would now take you $1.15 to be able to buy now. So we're going to have to have some kind of alternative to currency. And we need to have something that welcomes people and businesses to a world wide currency, a world economy. And the answer to that, in my opinion, is Bitcoin. Will there be maybe something else that might be better? Maybe. But right now, the two top ones, in my opinion, are Bitcoin and ETH. And ETH falls behind Bitcoin. There's a lot of stuff being built on ETH. There's a lot of uh, NFTs and the metaverse is like going to have a lot to do with ETH. Ethereum. Um, but the problem with Ethereum is gas prices, which is like the transaction price that's being charged per transaction to use ETH, which is their extreme. So right now, in my, in my opinion, the best way to go for cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. Um, as we see more adoption, that Bitcoin's going to become worth more. You're going to see, probably in my opinion, this is not financial advice and maybe I don't have any idea what I'm talking about, but with how I see it, you are going to be better off keeping your money in Bitcoin and other investments than keeping your money in a savings account, collecting dust and becoming worth less and less. So you're going to have a lot of people using Bitcoin as kind of a digital gold, as a way to store money for safekeeping where they know that it's not going to decrease in value because of uh, of inflation and because of uh, dilution, which is what we're seeing now in the U.S. and across the world because countries, governments and countries continue to print money 
we continue to go further and further in debt. And that's not a Democrat issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's not a, well, we used our funds for too many progressive things or we used our funds too many conservative things. A lot of it has to do in the U.S. has to do with we've gone so far in debt with wars that it's going to take a while to get back out of that if we get back out of it. And so as more and more countries are seeing inflation and seeing dilution by the creation of more and more money, the creation of more and more money, the creation of more and more debt, we're going to see the dollar to con continue to decrease in value. We're going to see currencies across the world continue to decrease in value. So we need something that we can't just at the drop of a hat create more. We have to come up with how we're going to pay for this debt before we, instead of creating just more currency out of thin air. And Bitcoin is the answer to that, in my opinion. In my opinion, looking at it and looking at adoption, looking how many big companies are starting to work to accept Bitcoin and work to adopt Bitcoin and um, put it in their books, um, the more we're going to see it be adopted by people and more people understand it. And as more people understand it and more people adopt it, there's less of it because it's more spread out. So that 21 million, once we hit that 21 million, less than 21 million, is going to be spread out even further, making the value, the price of Bitcoin go up. The, and we're going to see volatility. So I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, tomorrow we're going to see 80,000. Tomorrow we could very easily see 30,000. Because there's a lot of volatility because it's choppy right now is is more people like start to get kind of worried. Oh, well, you know, and, and there's other variables to it. But if as it kind of struggles a little bit, we're going to see some decreases here and there. As we see decreases, people will get scared, want to pull their money out. It happens. It happens in the stock market. But what you have to understand is more and more adoption happens. People will feel more secure with it once they understand it a little bit better. And once businesses start to adopt it, bigger and bigger financial institutions start to adopt it, then we're going to see that choppiness, but we're going to see it choppy up. And we're going to see the, the value and the price of Bitcoin go up, unless there's something else that's created that's even better as far as a cryptocurrency goes. But I don't see that happening. And Bitcoin's been around probably the longest, um, and it's the most well-known. And it, like we know that there can't be any more than this number created. It's just we have to make sure that more people understand it and that more people start to adopt it. And as people start to adopt it, like I said, supply and demand start to happen and the price of Bitcoin will go up with that. So um, I, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. What I will say is that I think someone who is smart, don't put all of your money into Bitcoin. I wouldn't say, I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to, but I would say to start small, putting small amounts or whatever you can afford to into Bitcoin on top of other investments, put it into Bitcoin and leave it. Don't watch Bitcoin. Don't watch it every single day. Believe it. Learn more about Bitcoin. As you learn more, put a couple of dollars away. Put $5 away, $10 away, maybe 100 you know, depending on what you have available. 10% of whatever, put 10% of whatever it is away. 5%, 1% of whatever it is away. Whatever amount you feel comfortable with. A dollar, if you feel comfortable putting a dollar. Put a dollar away into Bitcoin. Leave it. As you start to learn more about Bitcoin and become more and more comfortable about Bitcoin, put a little more away. Leave it.
Don't get scared whenever it gets choppy. Like I said, it's going to be choppy because people are uncertain. They don't know exactly what Bitcoin is, how it works, and they see it drop something like, oh crap, sell, 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 get out. It happens in the stock market. I see it all the time. So realize it's going to be that choppy. We may even see some drop down a little bit, but then it's going to kind of work its way back up. Once people start learning what it is, the more it gets adopted, the more that businesses adopt it, the more bigger businesses adopt it, the more that people start to just use it and become more comfortable using it, the more that things like PayPal and BAT and uh, Square Block um, and other services start to make it easier to collect and spend Bitcoin, the more it's going to be adopted by people the more it's going to be adopted by businesses, the more scarce it's going to become because there's only that 21 million, the more demand will go up, the more supply goes down, the more the price will go up. It's not guaranteed, but I'm saying it's not going to be a loss if you're putting away 5 or $10 and forgetting about it, just leaving it. Don't look at Bitcoin every single day. Because it's going to be up and down. Just leave it. See what happens. Check back in six months or a year. Or as you learn more about Bitcoin, you become more comfortable with it. Put a little bit more back. Five or ten dollars. That's a latte. At, that's less than a latte at Starbucks. The worst that could happen is you lose the five dollars like you drink the latte. Okay, it's gone. Cool. But you're not going to lose. Like, it's not going to go to zero. And I almost can almost guarantee it's going to go up. Again, not financial advice, but that's what I'm gradually doing. I'm gradually putting a dollar here, five dollars here, and just forgetting about it. Like, I don't care. It's a savings. And to me, it's a better bet to put it there than to put it in a savings account to collect 1% in a year or whatever, less than a percent in a year. So that's my challenge to you. Keep in mind this number, 21 million. That's it. And keep in mind that there's going to be other cryptocurrencies because there's already hundreds of them. We call them shit coins. That there can be more and more created of. What? <laughs> right now, the secure bet for cryptocurrency, in my opinion, is Bitcoin. Second in that is ETH, but ETH needs to get their gas fees down. They need to figure out how to bring those gas fees down. Okay, that is all I got. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, don't get left behind on this. Don't get left behind on this. Um, in five years, you may be super thankful that you started putting $1 here and $5 here. A good way to... Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, a good way, uh, let me, no, let me see here. I may have, uh, okay, it, go to stockvoyager.com slash free. This isn't set up for this. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, go to stockvoyager.com uh, slash free. And on there, uh, you can sign up for, uh, well, there's four different services you can sign up for on there. There is... Uh, Weeble, there's uh, Robinhood, there's Cash App, and then there's Lolly. Weeble and Robinhood. This is your best way to get a start on Bitcoin. They're going to give you shares of stock by signing up using the URL that's on that website that's on Stock Voyager. Use those URLs and sign up. You're going to get one or two shares each or something like that. They're going to range between five and ten dollars, maybe four dollars, four and ten dollars, we'll say, maybe a little bit more. Once it lets you sell them, sell them. Then take that money and put it into Bitcoin. You can buy Bitcoin on Weeble, you can buy Bitcoin on Robinhood. Cash App, sign up, it gives you, I think, five dollars. I think it gives you like five dollars cash. Sign up for that. You use the cash on Cash App, you can buy Bitcoin. You can actually send Bitcoin on Cash App. Um, 
and spend Bitcoin, I believe, on Cash App. Pretty cool. Um, Lolly is the next one. Go to Lolly, use the link on there, get the app, use that code that's on the website, um, and you get $1 in Bitcoin right away. $1 in Bitcoin, um, and it's free. And then Lolly helps you earn Bitcoin on just normal transactions, spending money wherever you would usually spend money at. Um, I use it for uh, mainly for my, if I'm ordering food on Grubhub, um, every transaction I get a dollar back uh, for ordering food on Grubhub. So that's cool. And then I, I have a dollar in Bitcoin that's just there waiting. So, okay, so do that if you, if you haven't yet. Be sure to go to the website there. Um, remember 21 million? That's it. That's all there's going to be. Um, and then supply and demand. So we're at 47,000 now. Check back in a year and see where we're at. Something tells me we're going to be quite a bit higher. But it could just be me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I just want to share that with you all. That's all I have for the day. Um, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I'll talk more about Bitcoin, more about stocks, uh, more about businesses, more about future businesses. Um, and yeah. All right. That's all I have. I love you all so much. Uh, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye. Mwah.